Um, so, uh, welcome everybody to this uh, digital embassy session. Um, it's nice to to see uh, all the all the guests and also uh, to have a representation of every embassy. Um, so I'm going to tell you uh, briefly uh, what uh, we are doing in, in these uh, two hours of session. Um, we have divided this session in three blocks. Um, in the, fir in the first uh, block, we are talking about invisible conversation. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, more about this uh, in a minute. Uh, the second block, uh, we are talking about the, the case of urban rights. Um, and the third block, um, uh, we, we are talking about practical issues uh, because the, 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 the first and the second block are more uh, theoretical or um, more about uh, concept. Um, so um, the, the main goal of the digital embassy uh, in this uh, urban right edition um, is to, to think together with all the, all the embassies and all the people taking part in, in, in the project of urban rights about uh, how to set up a uh, useful digital infrastructure uh, for the project. Um, uh, Luiso and Aurora, the, the coordinator of the, of the project, has thought about the, the digital sphere uh, like another territory, like the rest of the territories uh, taking part in, the, in, in urban rights. So this is, uh, this is nice. And uh, if we think uh, in this digital uh, territory um, uh, as, a, as a part of the project, um, we need uh, that the, 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 the digital infrastructure that we, we need um, um, respond to uh, uh, several, several needs the, the project has. Uh, for example, we need to work together uh, between territories uh, at the same time. We need to, um, to inform to other territories and to be updated of the processes uh, that happens in its territories, in its territory. Uh, we need to communicate with other territories. Um, very, very important, we need to document and register the, the action and the, and the processes um, happening in, in its territory. So, um, uh, why we are talking about uh, invisible conversation today? Uh, to set up a, a digital infrastructure, we have to see a lot of things, but one of them is, is this uh, invisible conversation. What are uh, invisible conversation? Well, are um, conversation, uh, private conversation that are taking, uh, uh, that are happening in, in channels, in non-official channels. Uh, so uh, not everybody is taking part in these conversations. Um, so um, are these conversations uh, necessary uh, in, in, in the dynamics of a, of a project like urban rights? Um, what happened if in these conversations, um, see if these conversations uh, are um, uh, places where um, uh, we start to make decisions? Uh, what happened with people that are not in, in these uh, in these uh, spaces um, are out of these uh, decision making spaces um, and finally uh, how we can uh, register and document the things that uh, are going on in these invisible channels so this is uh, more or less the main topic and in the fair uh, in the first uh, block uh, i'm going to ask our guest uh, pablo patricia domenico and, and pascual thank you to be here uh, uh, with us today uh, to uh, 
uh, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, uh, to uh, introduce a little bit the organization you take part in. Um, and finally, I'm going to ask you uh, uh, to tell us how, how do you deal with this uh, situation, with this uh, invisible conversation, uh, are positive or negative uh, uh, in your working uh, or uh, decision making uh, spaces? Uh, how do you uh, uh, make them compatible with, uh, with the need of documented and, and registered processes? Um, so uh, for this first uh, block, uh, each of you, uh, you have uh, five maximum uh, eight minutes to, to talk about this. And then uh, we, are, we are going to have uh, uh, 10, 15 minutes uh, for the rest of the people to, uh, to, to ask you uh, some questions uh, about your experience. Um, so, uh, who wants to, to, to start? Who was the first one to arrive? <laughs> <laughs> Pascual? I wasn't the I first one to arrive. <laughs> I don't know if it was Pablo or Patricia who was the first one. <laughs> no. Uh, I, can, I can go, okay. Well, uh, I'm Pascual. Um, I, um, uh, I work uh, in a cooperative uh, uh, company, a small cooperative company with uh, six partners uh, in Canary Island in uh, Tenerife. Um, here in Spain, and uh, we work um, uh, developing like uh, strategic uh, consultancies and uh, civic design process in the fields of uh, civic innovation, architecture, social urbanism, uh, territory, and uh, community-based uh, support. And well, I guess by introduce myself, uh, it's okay with that. <laughs> I don't know if you want Alfonso to speak already for how we deal with uh, that issues or we're going to make first uh, like a round of uh, introductions no we can go with the with the your explanation and then uh, we can turn my okay. test yeah. okay well um for us um what well, I, I don't know if if i have um like uh, so much clues about uh, about this, I think it's a very tricky issue. Um, uh, I think that um, I don't know if the question is if they are positive or negative. I think uh, this kind of uh, invisible conversation are uh, inevitable. Uh, that you are going to have it, and for us, um, first of all, one thing that um, should work is to uh, understanding that um, the six of us uh, has like uh, personal situations and uh, personal context and for that like personal and individual rhythms and try well first trying to name this uh, personal and individual uh, context trying to make visible which are the necessities and the rhythm of uh, each of us and then from that point uh, trying to like to build a, a common rhythm like to have a common rhythm for the six of us uh, and trying to make this uh, rhythm fix. What I mean by this is, for example, trying, trying to have like a weekly meeting fix uh, every Monday. So even if I have like this kind of invisible conversation, which is going to be inevitable with one of my uh, colleagues, uh, okay, maybe we decide something, maybe we decide to do something or we have some ideas, but we know that we are going to have the space to share this with the rest, uh, which is this uh, this fixed uh, weekly meeting, for example, um, or to have like uh, fixed spaces in an, in our online uh, communication tool, um, 
to trying to share this kind of idea. So, okay, if I have something to share, I know that the, this is this specific channel in our Slack in which I can use this, um, in, in which I can share these ideas, for example. Um, anyway, um, I think also it's, um, for us, another thing that we are uh, facing, um, lastly, is that um, trying to understand the tools that we use, the specific tools that, that we use. For example, for us, we use Slack, as an online communication tool. Um, it works for us because we have uh, like more, this uh, multi-channel conversation. If you have mo more than one conversation running at the same time, I guess it's useful to, to have this. But for example, we are also trying to see how these are the limiting uh, ourselves to collaborate with other people, for example. So um, trying to understand how, how these kind of tools um, could be very useful to capitalize conversations because if you are if, if it's mandatory to go over there, uh, you are going to capitalize all these, which is maybe you you want to do it because you you. Try, you want to try to avoid this invisible conversation, but at the end, if you have a, a larger group, if, if you want to build a larger uh, network, uh, it's going to be negative uh, to, to have this. And yep, I don't know. Um, yep, I have some ideas, but maybe we can hear for, for the rest and try to put it in the conversation. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Pascual. Um, very interesting the idea of the common rhythm. I think uh, we, are, we are going to talk about uh, later. Um, uh, who wants to, to be next? Uh, we can go. <laughs> well, hi everyone, um, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm a journalist specializing in communication and social media. And I, um, for the last decade, I, I have took part in many different collaborative projects. Um, I would like to share um, this insight uh, from an activist point of view, instead of a, um, from a company or a job, because I, I cannot uh, share anything <laughs> in, that, in that space because I work for myself. So I take the decisions from my own for my own future. <laughs> so um, I would like to share uh, these three experiences very shortly. Uh, I was in Agora Sol Radio, that is an internet radio station uh, an activist radio uh, was born in, in 2011, uh, joined with the um, uh, 15M movement here in Spain. And the way in which we were making decisions uh, was uh, we had an, a monthly assembly uh, where we, we took the decisions we, we, we want to, to, to do in, in the radio or events related to the, the station or the new programs uh, or the problems we have in, in, the, in the group. Uh, it's true that uh, there, was, there was this little group, uh, like the core, core group of uh, Agora, in which we were like five or six people. And we have a WhatsApp group. So we share uh, different uh, ideas or um, when we, we wanted to do something, we shared it before uh, with, uh, in this, in this um, not official group. And then we, we put this, these ideas or, or these uh, questions we have for, for the rest of the, of the station or the people from the station in uh, the order day um, for the next assembly. Um, and that, that, that path was open for everybody. I mean, uh, maybe they were not in the, in the core group or they, they didn't share uh, this space in, in, in WhatsApp. But in fact, 
uh, everybody could uh, add any, any question, any proposal in this document and to explain in, in the next assembly. Um, it's true that uh, this was very, I think it was very open and very transparent in one way, but when we wanted this, this small group, we wanted to do something, uh, it was very easy for us to, to defend the idea of doing it, uh, even though maybe it wasn't in the, in the mind of the majority of the, of the group, but we were like the engine of the, of the um, radio. So we use that, that card for, for saying. Um, the other experience I can share is uh, my grow, uh, work group. Um, it's um, a user group, a uh, Wikimedia user group. It's called Wikisfera. And I, I, I did this, I mean, I prepare uh, this group in Media Lab Prado. It's a, a cultural center here in Madrid. Um, it's a group where people come to learn how to edit in Wikipedia. Um, uh, I opened the group in 2015, so it has uh, it is uh, it's now five, five years old. And I don't have a, a core. I mean, I I mainly um, make the the group with people that um, share my my point of view in the way I manage the, I don't know, like the, the way we order the, the, we prepare the activities and, and incorporate uh, to receive new people who want to learn how to edit in Wikipedia. So I essentially decide what to do and <laughs> the other people share with me the, the direction I, I made um, and they come with me. So there is no space for uh, other kind of debates. So I, I mean, uh, there are no debates or I mean, the decisions are not shared because it's like my own decision. So <laughs> I discuss with myself. <laughs> um, the other experiences uh, related with, the, with this second one is the, um, the Wikimedia movement. Uh, because uh, um, although it's very open, uh, everything in, in Wikimedia, I mean, every Wikimedia platform like Wikipedia is everything is open. You can, you can visit the discussion of every single article or the discussion for the community around any article or problem. And um, there is a place called the cafe. So you can go and debate with other um, with, with other people from the community. In fact, uh, there are like lobbies uh, out the space of Wikimedia where we talk uh, with people from our own, uh, uh, our own points of view. Uh, for example, if someone has made a movement in one of the articles we have developed and is threatening us to erase the article, to ask to a librarian, uh, the administrator in, in the figure of administrator in, in Wikipedia to erase the article. Uh, we ask for, ask for help in non-regulated uh, spaces like WhatsApp groups or Telegram groups. Like we ask for help to make, um, to make uh, a kind of, um, uh, I don't know, like to try to, to defend this article with our own people, like to um, fight against this idea of only these people can decide what kind of articles are in Wikipedia and what kind have to be erased. Uh, mainly in with the examples of women that are so questioned every single time. Um, so there are these parallel channels where we organize, but I'm sure <laughs> this same thing Mm, is done with uh, uh, with the people that is not in in our same perspective, and they dis they defend 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 other kind of articles or ideas. And there are these spaces where you have to fight against or in favor of some article, and you have to argue why are you uh, supporting or. Um, 
uh, saying no to this 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 idea and we organize in these non-organized spaces and well with this i think i cover all, all the things thank you thank you patri um, i really like these two ideas uh, you talk about in the agrasol radio project uh, you use uh, as uh, if i understand well uh, the whatsapp group like a more private space to to share things with a, a, a more little group of people and then uh, go to the to the rest of the people this is this is nice and in wikimedia they use the, the these private conversations to uh, to balance power uh, um, uh, overall if, if you are a, 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 man, a minority uh, in the in the Wikimedia community, thank you. Um, who is next? Uh, Pablo Dome. Hi, I can go. Let's yeah? go, Pablo. Okay, so um, I'm Pablo. I today I define myself as a data analyst and data visualization, and also a community organizer. And I participate in different groups. One of them. Uh, the one I dedicate more time is uh, Montera 34, which I, I work with Alfonso. Uh, I, I live in Bilbao and I take part in different uh, associations or, or group, like, uh, for example, Basurama, which I founded in, in Madrid, or I, the working space where I usually are, not now because of the pandemic, is Wikitoki in Bilbao. It's like a club for organizing. And I participate in neighborhood associations, also in the um, uh, parents association from the school of my children. And also I was uh, active, not, not anymore or not recently, in public lab. And I will use examples of, this, of these different organizations uh, to, to tell what, what, what does it mean for me, the invisible conversation. Uh, so invisible conversation are gonna happen as I think uh, Pascual uh, was pointing, uh, and I think they can be useful for newcomers, uh, uh, people that ent enter the organization, so they, they need a special advice and things you don't need to repeat to the rest. But usually it helps uh, when, for example, today a new person was coming in the communication group in the neighborhood association, and as I was explaining to him the roles on it of everyone it helped everyone else to situate themselves and say okay this is how we are how we operate because it's not not, not always clear so it's always uh, interesting and sometimes they need privacy to to solve particular question and they come to you as the organizer or coordinator and of course it's, it's a good good thing to do but uh, it takes time and and and, and sometimes these problems should be shared broadly. It's like when in the school, the teacher says, hey, uh, Johnny, what were you saying? Please tell to the whole class because it's gonna be interesting. So it's the same, it's like, if someone is telling, if someone tells you something or you want to explain something, maybe it's better to explain to, the, to everyone else. And that's usually the, the case. For example, in, in public lab, that was really, uh, was working through a email list. Well, there was one email list per language, and you, you you know you write something and people answer only to you, and so you 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 have to say to the people no don't, don't answer only to me. Just respond to everyone in the list, so it will serve to for everyone. So there was a like a a joke among organizers. Um, among organizers was like uh, I'm going to make a T-shirt like email the list. So don't answer me. Just answer so everyone else can can read it and 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 so we can all learn from these questions and, and answer because otherwise we're going to make the same question again and again and again so i always advise please send this to the email list send this to the to the chat or whatever uh, channel of organization we have uh, also pascal was talking about the multi-channel i think we are sometimes lost in the multi-channel no for example even in a Two people group like i am in montera 34 we have the email the telegram the telegram of whatever the whatsapp so you are looking for information and you don't find so it's it's, it's always good to to fix one channel or two 
or to define to a particular rules what information is and what decisions or what things are shared in one place or another. For example, in Wikitoki, we have one channel, which is like the, it's called now the official. We just opened it recently. And this is to take uh, decisions or to share uh, urgent needs. And we have another, which is tentative, which is just, there's not only people from Wikitoki, but other people, they can share ideas or whatever. So it's good to, to, to focus and to define which channels and what are their purpose, their needs, and the time of response and everything. Because if not, you are lost in this, in this multi-channel. And, and the, the kind of tools we use, I think some of them have been already mentioned, like a Telegram channel or a WhatsApp channel. They, they can be for the whole group or for the coordination. And also the email list or forums and the meetings and the calls. The meetings and calls, uh, to be really properly uh, accountable, you need to, to document them. So every, every, every time you have a, a meeting, there's someone and you have to set certain roles and someone has to take notes. You have to decide if you take the whole conversation or just the, the hot topics or the summary, but there needs to be a, a, a summary what, what has been discussed yet there. For example, in Wikitoki, we decide to share the summary of the meeting after every meeting, just a summary. You can always access to the folder where there are all the meetings or whatever. And also we, we move uh, to, instead of having one document per meeting, you just have one big document with all the meetings of that year, which avoids you to look in, oh, where was this link? So you have one link for this entire year, meetings 2020. And so there you have in inverse chronological order all the meetings. So it makes it easier to, to find all the information. That avoids a lot of uh, people looking for documents because usually it's the only one, the only one document. And, and also another, another thought, another idea about uh, when you should use a personal message or to send to the entire group. I usually think uh, before sending a personal message, if I could send that message to the entire group, if it's not going to make harm or it's, uh, if it's not dangerous or in, in any way, uh, I will send it to the, to the list uh, so everyone can read. And so I avoid to resend to uh, different people. And above all uh, is this, uh, this idea of this text, text that you may know of, of Joe Freeman, the, the tyranny of structured learners, uh, which is a, a uh, feminist uh, document, I think from the it was 80s. I don't, I don't remember uh, properly. Uh, which, which tells uh, about the, some groups, apparently they don't have rules. Uh, they are, there's a lack of a structure, but usually this lack of a structure or, of, or lack of rules, it is hiding uh, really that there are rules and maybe you don't know them. You don't know who is ruling, you don't know who is deciding. So if a group, takes decision in non-official groups, in non-official channels, uh, it doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's freer or it's, it's, uh, it's better or it's more, uh, it works in a more free environment. It means that you cannot understand who is in power, which are the rules, and it's unaccountable. And, and it's also more difficult to people, for people to get inside because they don't understand the structure, they don't understand the rules. And, and so if you have multiples of these channels that you don't control, you cannot access them, you don't know who is in them, uh, it's gonna be more, it's gonna be a more uh, uh, closed group than, than and otherwise, when you have set uh, particular structures and, uh, and rules and, and, and the channels and the purpose of every channel. That doesn't mean that you can have, you cannot have informal channels that you will always have but they will not substitute the official one. Thank you, Pablo. Um, it's amazing because uh, 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 every one of you had made uh, uh, <laughs> seven minutes. Perfect. <laughs> the thing uh, I, I've never seen in a, in a in a session like this. <laughs> I was not counting, it was coincident. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Uh, really interesting the the reference of the of uh, Joe Freeman and the the, 
the ideas you have told us, you you have extract of the of the text. Um, and I really love the 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 metaphor with the Johnny in the in the class, <laughs> very um, very illustrative. Um, so Dome, uh, let's go with you. So hello and hello everyone. I'm really happy to be here with you. Uh, this is the the gift that the digital sphere give uh, us. Uh, I can see a lot of familiar and friendly face that uh, maybe I don't have the opportunity to, to meet uh, often um, physically. So hello, I'm really happy. Uh, just a little presentation. So my name is Domenico Di Siena. Um, uh, I'm, I'm used to work to, um, with uh, organization, private and publics, and even uh, academics in order to promote and improve the collaboration. And uh, we can see even activate uh, collective intelligence. At the end, after all of these words, what I do is uh, activate communities, uh, whether digitally than uh, physically. Uh, I am involved in different uh, networks, community, and the groups uh, that uh, go uh, often from digital to physical and the, the opposite. And uh, ha yeah, I had also the opportunity to uh, work on the activation of a really physically, uh, locally uh, community connected with uh, spaces uh, like uh, community hubs, uh, uh, co-working, fab labs. Uh, we love to call it uh, actually uh, civic factories. Um, so in terms of um, how, um, I mean, what kind of uh, networks and community and groups I'm part of. Uh, so I'm, I'm part of the, the network called CivicWise. Uh, it's a distributed uh, network. I mean, it's a network with a distributed uh, governance uh, focused on civic engagement, civic innovation, etc. Uh, I'm also part of um, a cooperative called Fairbnb Coop, uh, which is promoting an alternative for a short term vacational uh, platform. It's a cooperative platform, uh, it's a cooperative and is proposing uh, some uh, alternative that maybe uh, avoid uh, the gentrification effect that other platform is maybe. Uh, uh, increasing. Um, I, I'm part of, uh, um, let's say, collective, I don't know, we don't know yet how to call ourselves, it's called Ciudades Comunes. Uh, it's a, a bunch of people, it's a transdisciplinary group uh, that uh, promote uh, projects uh, in about uh, the, the right of the city, the common city, and uh, we actually get together to, with the idea to organize um, a physical meeting in Buenos Aires and the pandemic emergency changed uh, all. And at the end, we organized a digital meeting that has a lot of success and we really enjoyed it. So it was today, a two-day festival with uh, an ongoing uh, streaming all the two days. And now we are continuing to promote some other uh, projects. One that I'm spe especially uh, glad to be part is uh, a sort of um, accelerator for a um, project that want to activate uh, public spaces uh, after the pandemic. Uh, the after is quite <laughs> bizarre <laughs> to use, but. Uh, uh, so, but it's interesting because it's uh, the same. It was planned to be something that uh, we will developing on site, and at the end we are doing that in a digital sphere. So actually, we are uh, um, following and advising uh, six projects uh, all around the South of America, and uh, it's quite interesting how actually at the end this digital sphere is completely changing the meaning of the idea to accelerating. Uh, projects and how actually we are creating co-learning spaces. And I am also part of uh, several groups that activated um, 
spaces, as I, as I said. The first one was in Paris, uh, and uh, uh, the second one in, uh, in Valencia, where I am now. And uh, it's spaces where actually we try to get uh, people from different fields together and create something that is useful for the positive, let's say, for the local community. So this is the first introduction. I, I think it was interesting to tell more, a little bit more about uh, where I am from, no? what kind of uh, context uh, I am involved with. And uh, with that, sharing with you some, um, some ideas, some thoughts about uh, actually how we can manage and uh, organize the, the communication and this, also this invisible conversation, uh, the problem, the opportunities, etc. So one first talk I want to share with you is that uh, in my experience, what I, I really learned is that uh, collaboration is based on misunderstanding. So you, you have to accept that uh, you will have a lot of misunderstanding. And uh, this is uh, quite um, maybe sometimes suffering. I mean, that's a pain. And uh, the first time you really face to it uh, in a maybe in a negative way, a bad way. When you understand better, you, you, you see that this is uh, quite part of the collaboration. As soon as actually you accept that, as soon actually you could improve the, the collaboration. We, we, we could see later why I'm talking about, uh, about this. Another thing which is really important is the power of, uh, of information. And uh, this is uh, also interesting for me because I'm used to work in, fields and you know networks community where actually we try to avoid that uh, in, at any cost try to uh, try to create the condition where actually uh, there there will be less power on the information actually distributing us as 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 much as possible uh, the information I, I am surprised because lately I am uh, I had the, the opportunity to experiment the opposite it, it was, I was really uh, shocked uh, to see that uh, in some occasion you have people that really are creating invisible conversation to keep power. So this is something that uh, we have to say that there are a lot of people that create on purpose this invisible conversation to uh, actually uh, get power or keep uh, the power. And um, another thought uh, that is interesting, I think, uh, we, we, all of you, you already said it about it. Um, in a way, we know that uh, it's needed. Uh, the, 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 this invisible conversation is needed, but it's, I think it's interesting to explicit, explicit why, why it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's needed. Uh, Pablo was saying that, okay, welcoming people no, is something that you, uh, is, is sometimes you, you have this invisible conversation. But I would like to point out that why. So this is the, the idea that uh, we forget that the, the importance of the career, I mean, the bodies, the, the, the people that uh, get the information, uh, especially when it's invisible, I mean, it's just one-to-one, face-to-face, actually the, 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 the career is the message. So the people who is welcoming you is in uh, um, her, her um, uh, is the, the message I, I can develop later. Maybe. And uh, why I'm saying that uh, is also because sometimes, even when it's not just welcoming some, something new, uh, even between people that are already involved in the project, what we need is a, a sort of empathy uh, conversation. So we, we, we maybe we, we have a bad day or we are really happy and we need and we, we hope uh, we can share it with people with we are working or you know developing uh, collaborative projects so for that we need to have also this uh, personal uh, space we were talking with uh, uh, with uh, Afonso I really loved uh, his uh, talks is not mine that uh, is true that uh, more and more we need this uh, personal spaces where we can share uh, information because we are used to have too much spaces where is uh, even to public, so maybe uh, there is the need for uh, some private uh, spacing. Domain. Um, finish, yeah. I'm finished. Yeah, okay, perfect. 
Ah, you, you have yeah. a race. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was two, two. Yeah. perfect. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, Dome. Um, really interesting uh, this idea of the power of information and and the thought about why this uh, invisible conversation are really really useful. Uh, I think we are developing these these ideas uh, uh, um, in in this session later. Um, well, uh, thank you all. Uh, now uh, we have uh, a 10, 15 minutes to uh, to make questions to our guest. Um, so uh, if any of the ambassadors or any of the of the other um, people in the in the room has question. Uh, now is the moment. Don't be shy. If uh, any of the guests you have question to other guests, you you can uh, you can go ahead to. Can I uh, ask a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, so thank you to the. the I'm happy to see Domenico. I didn't see him in life for a very long uh, time. Um, so um, there is a. Uh, Two things that were said. First, Pasquale was mentioning the fact that uh, in his cooperative, the, he is communicating on Slack, uh, but this prevents. Uh, so he has this structure of the multi-channel conversation on different topics, but this prevents uh, him from collaborating with new people. Or this is like a question that is open regarding this format. And then uh, um, Pablo was mentioning the text that we didn't have the time to read, but about the tyranny of structurelessness. And we have to say that, for example, inside Console Club, and maybe you can uh, uh, say if you agree or not, we have uh, tried many of these Slack and uh, what's the name of the other? Uh, <laughs> yeah, these platforms, and it never works for us. What works for us is actually email, basically, and uh, calling each other and meeting. And uh, but the the thing that I that I think was interesting for us, and maybe you can see if in any of the other organizations is the same, is that at Concert Club, we are kind of a very liquid, very uh, disorganized uh, network in a way that is not so structured. And this allows actually for um, people to enter and, uh, and go out in a very, uh, let's say, easy, low um, threshold uh, way. This uh, regards the projects themselves, but also the way we communicate. So it's a kind of a very uh, amorphous uh, group that is uh, extending and uh, uh, um, uh, becoming smaller and, and, and bigger at times. And the, the, the fact that it's structureless uh, allows it to be more porous. So I don't know what is the in the text, the disadvantage of uh, structurelessness. I guess I understood a little bit what Pablo was saying, but uh, yeah, I was wondering if structurelessness can not sometimes be also an advantage. Mm, so for me, I, I can go with uh, some ideas. Yeah, well, because also I was I was thinking also about um, this idea of uh, structurelessness uh, from from Pablo. I think it's very interesting and also connected with this uh, information, with the power of information that uh, that we, uh, were mentioned, um, and also uh, Richard Richard Bartlett, uh, which is a member of uh, Lumio organization and and the Ham. He's he's always saying that uh, we have to break the the power uh, taboo. That we have to speak more about about power, and I think this this is the theme for this uh, issue of exclusiveness. That sometimes we 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 hide um, we hide these invisible decisions under um, horizontalization. That, that like we know that we are having 
uh, for example, invisible decisions. And we know that some people have a lot of power because owns a lot of information, but we we say ourselves, no, we tell ourselves, no, it's okay, we are an, an horizontal uh, structure. We are an horizontal organization. It, it's, it's cool, it, everything is okay. And, and the thing, uh, and, and for me, the, the important thing is, is that, is to name it, is to name the, who owns the, the information. It's not a problem that, that a few people of the organization owns uh, the information. The problem is not to name it. The problem is not to make it visible that these people has this power. Um, uh, well, I, I don't know if uh, I'm answering the question, but <laughs> just uh, bringing uh, more ideas. And also another thing that I think is in, that uh, comes to my mind uh, hearing to listening to, to Patricia Dom and Pablo that sometimes with, when we, because for us, for example, when, when, when these kind of things happen, okay, we have this invisible decision, we have this invisible conversation. Well, uh, we used to think like a very faster that, okay, we need more protocols, we need more tools that trying to organize a structure, all the conversations, the information to make, make it more horizontal and so on. Well, first of all, it's, it's to, to, to try to understand if, if that is true, if we need it. So, because as you were saying, for example, for us, it, 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 it didn't work. Sometimes it didn't work and it's okay that it didn't work. Uh, so trying to understand what, what are your real needs but also to understand that uh, if you, if the group agree that uh, they need these protocols, if, if they agree that they need need these tools, um, sometimes we get frustrated because we think that protocols are like magic. Like, okay, we are going to set this kind of protocol. We're going to set this kind of rules and it goes, it's going to, 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 to go very uh, like, very easy and it's, it's not like that it's a process and it's a process that uh, for me the, 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 the two important talents is to try to avoid the over uh, bureaucratization to have a lot of protocols that at the end are, are not sensitive to the context and to the needs that the group really has and it becomes a, a bureaucracy it's not a protocol and so first of all try to avoid this and the second challenge for me is uh, that it's a process of building trust. So at the end, because this kind of tool, this, this kind of protocols uh, gives you the feel that you can be aware of everything happening in the organization. So it's like you go from invisible conversation, but you are not aware of what is happening. You set these kind of protocols and, and tools to try to be aware of everything. And it's impossible to be aware of everything. So once you get to the tools and your protocols, it's like, okay, we, get to, we have to get in between and say, okay, everything is, is, uh, is open, uh, but that doesn't mean that we have to be involved in everything. And this is also, I think, a uh, um, mistake that sometimes we made that we uh, misunderstand openness with uh, participation and openness with um, uh, horizontal collaboration. It's not the same. You, you could be open and that doesn't mean that you are participatory or, or collaborative. And, and it's okay, you don't have to be. If you want to be just open, because it's okay, just name it, just say it. Again, with this idea of name the thing, make visible this structure and, and not to avoid power. Okay, there's few people that have more power than the others. It's okay, just name it. And as Paolo was saying, then if we can name it and make it visible, we can make it accountable. So. Uh, one thing, uh, Natasha was asking me if observers can participate. Of course, uh, you can. Everyone can participate now. Um, and, and the second thing is, if, if you want to talk, uh, if we start to talk, uh, we, we are uh, we are uh, a lot of people here. So if if if, we, if you want to talk, you can raise your hand. Um, okay, three three people. Uh, first people that has raised uh, her hand uh, has been Patricia. Patricia, so go on. Um, eh, I, I wanted to, to share the idea that maybe it's important, it's important to, to, to get the tool we need for each uh, different space. Uh, for, for example, when we use uh, in an organization a mailing list to debate, 
uh, I think it's, it's a mistake because um, and this is, uh, for example, I, I, I have here the example in, for Agora, in, uh, in Agora Sol Radio, we haven't had uh, debates in, in the mailing list. The mailing list was for communicate, for example, what's the date for the assembly and to share the document where we can put the, um, the information we want to share the day of the assembly or the discussion we want to have in the day of the assembly and don't make these parallel discussions before the, 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 the date we have for the assembly. And because if we, we, we made these, these, these spaces, like uh, we have the, deba the debate before the assembly, uh, then in the assembly, what we are going to, or repeat ourselves, or we are going to have a different kind of discussion. So for helping the, the majority of the people, uh, I think it's important to, to limit uh, the tools for, for the reason we are, I mean, if we are using mailing lists for, for communication and not everybody has the time or the energy to answer for this kind of um, parliaments in text where people explain them, themselves, uh, it's impossible for everybody has the, the time to, to, to think of, of this and to dedicate the time. So um, try to have like this previous um, a protocol of um, respect, respect the, the spaces. Like mailing this is for this proposal. I mean, for this objective, we, we don't change that. We have a Telegram channel, great. But in the Telegram channel, you cannot decide the, the, the things you have to discuss in the assembly. I mean, it's very difficult sometimes because uh, we used to, uh, I don't know, like to, to work in general uh, for urgen urgencies. Like we have to decide it and decide it today. And um, if we don't have kind of a planning in our lives, in activism or in jobs, uh, we are lost. <laughs> That's all, thank you. Thank you, Patri. Uh, Pablo, now it's your turn. Yeah, uh, uh, regarding the, the bureaucracy that um, Pascual was, was explaining that you can be uh, buried under so many rules that you put, I think the good thing for a group is to set up the tools that you need and as you grow. So you will not start a group like creating a, a folder for meetings and, and three channels for coordination and working groups. It's just you start small and you create all the tools or the things you need. Uh, that happens to us in Basurama. We, at the beginning, we didn't know even the assembly, the way assemblies were working, but we kind of reinvented them. We just used the tools that were existing there as creating a documents where we collected the decisions. And, and regarding the what the people in Berlin, I don't know the name, uh, uh, were, were saying that they are really amorphous organization. And this is precisely what the what the text is, is uh, of, of Joe Freeman is, is talking about is that if you think you, that you don't have a structure, that you are flexible. Uh, precisely, the, the text uh, says that you have a structure, uh, there's power, there are rules, even if you don't mention them, even if you are not aware of them. So uh, you think, no, we are three, and then we are four, and we are five, and no, but surely there are some hidden rules, or you are not understanding that there are some rules, but. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't mean that this is bad for an organization, uh, like to be amorphous or to be flexible, is that there are implications that you may not be aware of. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, Natasha? Yes, hi. Um, actually, I really found interesting what uh, Lucia, I think Lucia, it's your name, I don't know, from the Embassy of Berlin. Uh, what she said about, um, I mean, I saw like like right now the two like two two parts the, the, the two faces of uh, of the same of the same thing. It's like on the one hand, Patricia uh, was saying that uh, we need structure, uh, we need the right tools for the right things. Without them, we're lost. On the other hand, Lucia was saying um, we use minimal tools because we would like something like more fluid. And this is the way we have been working in, until now. I think that both parts are uh, equally legitimate. Uh, 
I really believe that each one of the embassies should use the tools that they are with, with which they are common with working right now. Nobody should be obliged to do anything. But I think the purpose of this embassy explicitly, the purpose of the digital embassy is to uh, remind us that we are living now in a special moment where uh, this project, I mean, Urban Rights is a project that's very based on the, on the presential aspect. Like uh, it's, it was very important for people to gather physically and talk like seeing uh, with, uh, with seeing each other. I mean, we we all understand that there are parts of the of the physical presence that are very important uh, when we talk about uh, the importance of of communication. They can be verbal, but there can also be physical communication. Uh, so I believe that the part of the purpose of this embassy is to like raise attention on the fact that there is a certain transformation on the way we are thinking and the way we're doing things in order to transform everything to its digital footprint. So I think this is the thing that each uh, embassy and also the Urban Rights Project uh, generally should uh, consider. Now the way that we sh that each of us will do it will be a way that fits most to, to, to each project, I believe. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, Masha, Masha, I don't know how to how to say uh, the name. Sorry, Masha, uh, from the uh, Berlin Embassy. Uh, yes, I wanted to. I mean, I think uh, what Dietje's comment it was maybe quite uh, much focused on this technical structure because we were talking a lot about like how is the technical infrastructure we use and how structured is it or not structured. And then there's something like the power structure, which we also discuss a lot. And so I was wondering about your experience um, within, like if we go into dialogue and in, if we go into discussion, uh, I totally agree that, for example, naming who has power and these subjects, they are very central to like finding out your organization's power structures and uh, the human infrastructure or something like this. But I always feel there's a dynamic in conversations that goes into like content and that strives towards arguments, like to the conversation always kind of naturally goes into subjects where you can, somebody can say there, um, um, point of view and somebody else can argue against it and it's very hard to address these topics where it's more about like investigating and laying open what is there and understanding so I, I wonder how to like this is a big question for me how to moderate within these, these structures to really address these topics that you were also putting on the table as very important topics. Which is actually almost uh, our topic for our parliament. <laughs> so we by want the to way. have answers. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Patricia? Uh, well, maybe, I mean, I, I don't have the answer for, for that question exactly. Um, because I don't know what's the kind of group you are talking about. I mean, when you know the group or the organization, the number of people, the kind of uh, decisions you are talking about, I think it's easier to, to see how to moderate the, that kind of processes. But I don't think you can make a, an, an statement for general organizations in like, I mean, I think it's very different, different if it's in a small group or if it's a very large group. I'm, I'm less talking maybe just to interfere, I'm not talking about like how to moderate an organization. I, I thought it was a more, I meant it in a bit more open way. I feel, I, I see this phenomenon also in media or something that it's it's much more like uh, debates, they have much more power to spread than for example, in, investigative journalism that really goes to finding um, details and having a like very precise look on, upon a subject. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's it's often debates that develop more about like different positions of different people than investigating thoroughly. And this, I feel it, it also repeats in organizations. You, you discuss who should have more money or something, but you never like go, it's harder to go deep in a, in a community, in a bigger group. Um, 
I mean, I think it's, it's important to know how, uh, I mean, to transfer that is very, very complex. Uh, I really don't have an answer, but I wanted to share um, another point of view because you are talking, not, not, not you, nor you in Berlin, I think in general, you are talking about um, power, like an authority, uh, like uh, where the decisions are, are making. And I would like to share only uh, um, a thought uh, in 2011, I, I took part in a project, in a collaborative project called King, uh, 15M, uh, that CC, that it was like a project where we wanted, every wanted, uh, every people who was uh, participating in this uh, social movement in Spain, uh, M15 movement, uh, to share their stories and, and make this huge program, uh, project about collaborative uh, culture production, something like that. And what I, I learned from that project uh, is that um, despite we are talking about the, the importance of uh, everybody who wants to uh, take part of the decision of the group, not many people want to take part of the decisions. They prefer to, to follow what the core team has decided. I mean, for me, it was very frustrating to elaborate spaces uh, for the people to, to them to work together, to decide together in an horizontal way. And I broke my head to make this in a digital space and also in physical spaces. And I was unable to get it because people wanted to follow, not to decide. So I only <laughs> leave this idea for the debate, not because it's an answer for anything, but sometimes we are asking uh, the question of how to decide or, or how to make the decisions to, to make like more, more open or more participative. Uh, and I'm not sure if you, we are uh, analyzing how, uh, how it really works for the most of the people. I don't know what you think, um if there are more uh, thoughts more questions uh yeah um but uh is uh, 17 uh, 15 so uh, maybe the last intervention and then we uh, uh we pass to the block two um domenico no, I just want to say that I really like what just said uh, by Patricia. I think it's a really good point. And, uh, is, uh, and I, I would like to use his intervention to, uh, to put you also another uh, reflection about the difference between how we could uh, work in, uh, in, in collaboration. What I mean is that a lot of time, um, the problem with the, the communication and collaboration uh, is also because uh, we are in a sort of project that is a work in progress. So the, 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 power, the power of collaboration and the, uh, of distributed uh, structure is that um, uh, work in something that is not clear is possible. And uh, the challenge for communication in projects that are not completely clear is of course uh, bigger than the challenges we could have in a collaborative project where actually uh, uh, every task, uh, any re uh, responsibility is uh, defined. I want to say that based on my experience because now I'm working uh, with a European project and discovering how it works. And in there, it's, it's a an, an huge collaborative project I think it would be amazing to communicate to people around Europe that uh, uh, Europe is giving well, I mean, money to real collaborative projects. This is amazing. So it's a real collaborative project. But everything is established. You have a, a completely uh, number of tasks. And for each task, you have already defined who is in charge for it and with, with which uh, people or organization should collaborate. So this is amazing. So when I see that, it's amazing. Collaboration is something uh, that could work with uh, as something that is already established. But a lot of time I can see myself working in something that is not completely defined. So this distributed organization 
uh, all the time or group or projects. Uh, maybe we get lost in this um, ongoing uh, process where we could have uh, what Pat Patricia said, uh, the situation where actually at the end you have people that say, okay, let's go, let's do something, let's get some people take the decision <laughs> uh, because we just want to follow and uh, to understand what we can do to help uh, the project. So I think this is also something interesting. Thank you, Dome. Uh, we are having another uh, debate time um, now in the second block. So I, I guess we can we can continue with these ideas um, later. So uh, in this second block, uh, we are going to talk uh, more about the the case of urban rights. So in the first block, uh, we 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 have. Uh, inspiration for uh, from projects uh, of our guests, uh, but now we are talking about the the, the case of urban rights. Um, uh, I'm going to ask you the the guest to uh, to uh, to help the ambassadors or to uh, to give feedback to the to the ambassadors uh, about uh, their cases, their projects. Um, so. The structure of this second block. Um, I'm going to make a, a, a short introduction. After that, I'm going to ask you the, the ambassadors uh, to to talk a little bit about your needs, your problems, uh, your particular situation in, in your territory. Uh, if you want to talk, it's okay. If you don't want to talk, it's okay too. Um, uh, always in relation with the digital infrastructure. What do you need to, uh, to accomplish your goals, to, uh, to complete your processes uh, in your territory uh, in terms of uh, digital tools? Uh, and what do you think you need also uh, to communicate uh, with other territories? Okay. So um, before that, um, you are going to have more or less uh, three, five minutes uh, each. Uh, and then we are going to have uh, 10, 15 minutes of, of uh, debate. Um, why we are talking uh, today about uh, invisible conversations? When uh, Zuluar uh, has contacted me, uh, has contacted Montera uh, 34 um, to, uh, to take care of the digital embassy. Uh, they, told, they told me, they told us that uh, uh, Urban Right, European Edition, this, this project of Urban Rights uh, needed uh, tools to, to put in relation the, the territories, uh, tools uh, to uh, to develop the particular project in its territories and tools to uh, to um, documentate the the processes as I said as I said uh, in the in the introduction. So uh, we didn't know the the people working in, in other territories. So uh, we did a generic uh, uh, um, strategy. So. Uh, we set up um, uh, fast uh, some tools to communicate, some tools to document. Uh, I'm going to name them. Uh, we set a Telegram group, easy to set up, uh, easy uh, to use. Uh, we set up uh, a wiki a space to document the, the processes. Uh, we set up also um, a, a website to get informed and to uh, to be updated about the, the the news in the different territories, and finally we set up a mirror whiteboard to uh, to work together at the same time. For example, in in this kind of, of sessions, uh, so more or less none of them uh, have uh, work. <laughs> uh, I can say that uh, has been a fail uh, for me. Uh, is not important uh, because that's why uh, in Montera uh, we set up uh, tools uh, fast and if they don't work, uh, 
we uh, uh, we archive them faster. Uh, so uh, we can make another test and another test and another test. For me, it's part of the process. The, it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, in the in the first open session parliament we did a month ago, more or less, um, I realized that uh, most of the people in different territories were already uh, in contact. And uh, most of the people in most of the territories were friends. Uh, so for me, this fact changed uh, absolutely the, the situation. Um, so uh, I, I thought uh, with uh, Aurora Luiso, okay, uh, maybe uh, the conversations that we want to set up uh, are already happening, uh, but they are happening in invisible channels. Uh, they are happening uh, between people that uh, are friends and they are talking, uh, I don't know, uh, using WhatsApp or using the phone or, uh, but they are already talking, so this is okay. They are already talking. Uh, this is okay. This is a fact. Uh, so uh, the question that we are talking uh, today is how uh, we can uh, combine these existing necessary and hyper cool uh, conversations between friends and people that uh, uh, know each other before the starting of the project with the need of uh, a record and, and document the projects. This is the main, the main question for me, no? Um, this is more or less the analyze that we have done uh, from Montera um, after one month of, uh, uh, of uh, after the, this, this set of tools uh, I, I told you before. Uh, after no, no one uh, use this set of tools. Um, so um, first, of, first of all, uh, I want you, uh, the ambassadors, uh, I want to ask you uh, if you share this analy uh, analyze or for you is uh, is not the same uh, situation. Uh, and uh, in, in the other hand, what are your needs, as I said before? Um, as I said, uh, you, you have more or less three, five minutes, uh, and then uh, you can have the feedback of the, of, the, of the guests and of everybody. Who wants to, to start? You can introduce a little bit uh, yourself. Uh, you can say a little word about what you are doing in your territory, and after that, uh, you can you can say how you you see the the this situation. Come on. Don't be shy. Yeah, sorry. Is this for the ambassadors to talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I can start if you want. Thank you, Christina. Nice. <laughs> um, so thank you again for these amazing conversations, guys. Every time I'm getting more amazed and more into the this uh, this project. Uh, it's amazing that we came together under this platform, even that this is digitally. And this is super important. So we are, uh, I'm part of Theory Lab, that it's a very new initiative that um, uh, is in, based in Thesprotia, which is a rural area in the northern, western northern Greece. We are working, and I come from there basically. <laughs> That's why we are also based there. Um, and I think we are mostly the rural, let's say, embassy of the parliament. Um, what we have started doing is that documenting uh, the resources and human resources, because it's an area that it's mostly, 
it has like a lot of dispersed villages that they are missing like civic cohesion somehow. Um, the people that don't meet, there is a lot of abandoned public infrastructure. Um, and oh, between all these, we realize that there is a numerous, there is numerous, uh, there are various actually initiatives, mostly organized by women that they're either cooperatives, either formal, informal associations, that they are using some of this infrastructure. So we somehow um, working with some of them. Um, so like meeting them and countering them, trying to bring some of these groups together. Um, last summer, we managed also to bring some stakeholders or other initiatives from the area to discuss about what's happening in the villages and some potential work that it can happen there, like re, um, uh, reuse some of this abandoned infrastructure, like that there are abandoned schools. Uh, regarding this uh, parliament, we want to do uh, I mean, it's very hard to do something physical there because uh, on one hand, um, it will be an amazing opportunity for these people to, 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 to show their voices somehow, but on the other hand, it doesn't, they don't have digital access. So we would don't know how to do this kind of work, that it's something that I have also a question to, the, to, the, to our guests or how do you work in, in areas or in communities that they don't have digital tools. Um, so we were thinking to create like, a, to, to invite different, some of these uh, women, some of these people of this community, some stakeholders and some other uh, new initiatives that are happening in the area, in the extended area of Epiros, to talk about, um, to talk about the, the uh, different issues that they are like raising right now there. Um, so we have multiple questions. Like first is like how to share uh, the data that we have already gathered from one, the last year that we have been working with them and doing like different maps and research uh, or how to create like open data so this can be used by everyone. And the other question is actually, how can we create like a physical event and, and digital at the same time? So yeah, I think this is a little bit the concept. I don't know if I, if I was clear enough. I think so, yeah. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. If you want, we can uh, go with all the embassies and then we can open the debate. Any other embassy? David. Um, hello. First of all, it's nice to see uh, a lot of common faces and, and people uh, we've been working together uh, in many occasions. Um, I have to apologize, Martin and Jan couldn't be here. Um, and they are more the um, Antwerp um, collaborative experts because uh, uh, as most of you know, I, I've been working uh, last 10 years in uh, at Sulork in Madrid. So I'm uh, quite new uh, uh, being back here in Antwerp. Um, but basically, our project started because we were talking about the title of um, the uh, what what it could be the the urban rights, what what could be the declaration of urban rights. So um, Martin came up um, with the idea. Uh, you know, no, first Jan came up with an idea that in New York you have some um, street vendors. And they're like constantly uh, uh, fined because they're they're not uh, very welcome in the street view. Um, so 
uh, one collective, I don't remember right now the ID, but they started to make uh, very visual, uh, visible all the rights they have and what do they have to do to, to be a street vendor in the street. So when police came, they can see, I need to be one meter and a half from that door. Uh, I can ask your badge. I can even take pictures of you. So they made it visual what their rights were to, to, to sell food or stuff in the street. And then Martin came up uh, with the idea, well, here in Antwerp, you have some uh, kiosk, these round uh, podia where uh, sometimes orchestra perform. And he said, you know that every, um, every citizen has the right to use this podium and you can even ask uh, to the city council that they bring chairs and tables and a bar to, um, to, to give support to your event. And I was right, like really, ah, I didn't know that. So basically our idea is to, to, we don't know exactly how to do it, but to invite maybe um, people um, or some expert in law and, and, and in rights or to investigate which other rights are uh, do we have as citizens and we don't know. So somehow make them very visible, uh, maybe by doing an event in this kiosk uh, to random people. We don't want to focus on, uh, on experts uh, in, in collaboration and in uh, participation, but we want, we want to uh, access to random people. And that's also a bit how I, I don't know how to, to make this communication to these random people, uh, especially if, if you want it, uh, that, that it really uh, makes sense and can go to a, a, to a bigger audience than only experts uh, like we are here uh, today together. Uh, that's basically what's, what we're going to try to do. Thank you, David. Um, anyone else? Okay, we can uh, go. So um, here in Berlin, Licha and I are um, dealing with the question under the title of who's we, like working in this collective and collaborative and um, um, multi-perspective constellations. There's a lot of use of we and you, and sometimes it gets very um, um, unclear who's meant and who's considered by the group. And I think Pablo also said at some point something like a collective or we don't know how to call ourselves yet. So um, we are right now emerged in um, this question of format, how we can organize our event. And I think a lot of um, topics come up that have already been part of the discussion. For example, that we need these um, personal spaces. We have too many very public spaces and we need to create personal spaces that still are part of our work because they also produce our work. And so we are wondering how to create this event now in the conditions of COVID that creates a personal space, but that also creates some input that we can share with all of you. What, what um, transitions these informations have to go through to, um, to um, make it possible that the people involved at the same time feel the intimacy and the, um, the freedom to, to become personal, but at the same time we can like extract information. Yeah, and, and that's uh, the, the basic ideas that uh, 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 on which the project is built is, okay, how can we deconstruct the power relations of uh, uh, innovative uh, organizations and, and projects in Berlin and uh, fr from a sort of a fem feminist perspective, um, we, we need actually a space that is safe for the people that we are inviting and that it's not 
a space where anything is recorded or documented or made public. So we have these two different moments in our uh, parliament as we are imagining now. One is public and it has inputs from guests and it has our contribution. And then another one is private, meaning we don't want to communicate uh, with anybody <laughs> about, about it. So we are trying to imagine a different way of uh, uh, documenting it because we, we we think it's important that it's um, that something stays in the end of these conversations that we are having, but in a way that is uh, making it like maybe unpersonal um, or, or or personal, but in a from the point of view of an a special invited guest that is just there to pick the information. So our example for now is the person that is doing the drawing during the court um, sessions in the courtyard, no, the the courtyard. courtyard. <laughs> no, in the courtyard, in the court, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, we're trying to keep actually our session physical. Yeah. Uh, so we are trying to meet the people we are inviting for the session in Berlin in a space, but also there is this question of how to make the public moment public in a digital way is it just like uh, some images or a video recording that is made public is something else there is an interaction so we, we don't know really i guess yeah. also it's a question of time for us we didn't mention this in the conversation but all of these tools that you are mentioning and that is why maybe we also just stick to emails and call and phone calls it's they take enormous amount of time. So we're trying to... Uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any other embassy? I don't know. Uh, I think... It, So um, maybe we can start the the debate time. I don't know if okay, <laughs> perfect, Patricia, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's only a, a thought about the documentation uh, that we are very obsessed obsessed in general with the. I mean, I I, I say this for myself. I mean, I try to document everything, uh, every assembly, every meeting, every everything has to be recorded. We don't have time. I mean, I assure you, <laughs> we don't have time to see and to and to see again what we are uh, documenting. Sometimes we are so um, obsessed with the, with this idea of sharing everything and, and document everything that we we forget the narrative. The narrative of the process is more important sometimes than the raw data. I mean, the raw data is important, but it's not so important if we don't have, um, uh, yeah, a narrative of what we are living. I mean, what's happening. And if you don't have so much time, it's important you uh, determine the, the, the limits of, of the, I mean, sometimes we are more efficient when we have limits. Uh, if we we have to make a documentary of of thirty minutes, for example, it's absurd. We make thirty interviews uh, of one hour each. I mean, for the documentary reasons, for the documentary in general, it's okay. But if you want to make a film of thirty minutes, in which we, we uh, you have to 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 put this um, uh, this panel with all the the ideas is much more efficient and truly uh, much more um, practical uh, to, to make limits, like to make interviews of five minutes or 10 minutes. And it's very, uh, sometimes it's very, it's, it's, it's easier than we think uh, to make the others, um, uh, make the, uh, like put the, uh, those ideas that are important in the center of the, of, of this, short uh, period of time than when we open that space 
uh, without, uh, I mean, like you can uh, explain everything, you can have one hour interview, but then you have to scroll the, all the, that information and try to make, like to select what's the, the main idea. And the main idea, maybe it's easier for, for the people you are interviewing, like if you put time and, and, and expect that in, in, this, in, in this short period of time, you are, gain, you are getting what, what you need and what you want for, for the larger documentary or the larger project. Thank you, Patricia. Um, Pablo? Yeah, I would like to say, uh, talk about the, I mean, you were, say, you were talking about the, the problem with the rural and the non-digital tools. Although we are in a, in a digital embassy, I think the, usually the problems, I mean, the solutions are not usually technical. Uh, we, like from the hacker world or whatever, we, 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 we try to explain that it's not, not just the, the tools, but the, the rules or the, the people you are interacting with. And that's why we don't have a, a solution for everyone. For example, in the neighborhood association where most of the people are retired and they just have WhatsApp and they don't know how to do anything else. Uh, but like you are saying, a set of meetings in person uh, is the way to uh, work with them. So you have to reinvent the, with, the, with the conditions you have. You always have to work with, the, with the, what is existing there. And and, and that's why every time you, you have to think, for example, you are proposing a wiki, like you were proposing, uh, like from Montero, we're proposing to the urban rights uh, environment. But if people are not used to that, or they don't see the value in that, or they, they don't understand, they will not even enter, not even click in the, in the wiki. And, and so for every, for every community, you, you, you have to select which, which could serve more. And for the rural, maybe it's just uh, people you know, uh, you have a video and you have you 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 carry the video in a CD or whatever. Depends on the of the means of the people, the, the tools that people have at home. Thank you, Pablo. Um, there is okay. Uh, Cristina, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I was also uh, uh, wondering, since you say that uh, you were also the data analyst and uh, you work with data analysis and visualization, um, that for us it's also important to, to start sharing this data that we have, like that it's it could be like how many people are in each village, like it's something that is super normal, but imagine that this data, they don't exist in the area. Uh, how many associations, what kind of uh, products that they produce, each of them, like these kind of things start to start creating like a kind of network of communication and exchange between them. Uh, because although it's like a rural area, it doesn't have a lot of interaction between the people and because they live like in super dispersed villages and the topography is very rough, they don't have a lot of communication between each other. So we were thinking that it shouldn't be the only place. There should be other places, also in Greece, other places in Europe. So for us, it's also interesting to, to start sharing this, like some of the ideas, start sharing what's happening there. And maybe with this vision of creating like a, a kind of platform that has uh, these values that they can be used um, from other people or bring us a kind of uh, uh, input. Uh, so yeah, this was also some of the questions that we had. Okay. Um, I don't know if, if you want to answer this particular question, Pablo, I, I think it's more or less for, for you. Uh, and then we can continue with the raised at hand. I have to think about it now. I don't have a clear answer. Right? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Dome, uh, you have raised uh, your hand. 
Yes, and uh, just some thoughts, general thoughts actually, and I don't know if later we will have time maybe to uh, have more, even more specific question that we could try to answer. But uh, just a, a talks about um, how we could understand the technology and the communication, the digital communication, the digital sphere, because I think a lot of time uh, we are really focused on the, what, let's say, the, fi the final user. I mean, how we use the technology and who is actually, uh, uh, let's say, reading or consuming the information. And we don't take in account actually which is the real effect of the, the digital sphere or the, the digital communication. What I mean, I, I uh, usually take this uh, example. I remember in Italy when we have a, a referendum and uh, um, organized by Berlusconi and uh, you can see the difference between people that just uh, inform themselves by television and people that uh, get information by internet. What's, what's, what's interesting is that at the end, uh, people from the internet get the information and share it in, inside the, their home house with the parents, and they get uh, the parent change opinion. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, so a lot of time we think that digital sphere is just the final user that is watching uh, or reading the information, but uh, what is uh, amazing right now, and also in the pandemia era, is that actually the, the, the society is more and more structuring around uh, uh, digital, but not uh, specifically with the, each of us uh, being in front of a, um, a monitor. This is, this is really important, for instance, in terms of uh, public space or the parliament, how actually we have an effect, a result on the public sphere, the public realm uh, with digital. Uh, sometimes, as Patricia said, just having an archive about uh, the, all the um, event recorded and this archive is available for someone to reach it, to, to have a, a, how do you say it, a, a trust um, review is important because you are really creating something public because you have this uh, archive. Maybe a few people are going to consult this, but it's essential to have this public realm just uh, these talks. And then if you have a more specific question, I think we can also answer. Thank you, Dome. Um, Patricia? Uh, this will be for, for Christina. I mean, if, I don't know if uh, what kind, when, when you say uh, these people, they don't have access to digital. I mean, is people uh, like they don't have uh, like they live without computers, without internet. Uh, what kind of lack of digital world are, are we talking about? To make you an example of things that that we are living in another in another country, and maybe maybe can be useful. Imagine that there are like around thirty villages that the population is above sixty years old. Um, so yeah, I mean they might be internet. Uh, there is internet basically, but it's not, I mean, they don't know how to use it. Okay, uh, I was thinking in, in this example in, in some villages in, in Mexico where uh, a friend of mine who, who had this radio that was radio, but not ready in the studio, in the, in the, in the studies, uh, but radio like mobile uh, radio, like they, they have uh, they, these uh, wheels with the with the ampli and the, the technical parts for make radio and they arrive to the to the um, square of the village and they use it like with microphone and uh, uh, ask for the people to come to the to the square and to occupy the square and to talk to others um, uh, to others uh, neighbors so they they had this radio I mean they they record. And they, they, after that, they put it in an in internet for everyone. And it was a way to give them voice in a technical space that they didn't know. I mean, they, they know radio, but they don't know the experience of having a microphone, for example. And I was thinking in this idea that sometimes these tools are very useful to, to make people like easy, easy to access to communication. Maybe you, you can have uh, a cinema, like portable, portable cinema 
uh, to show the data and make this in a, in a square where all people can, can come and they talk and they can ask and you, you um, like um, break this uh, gap with them because the technology is not a, it's an issue uh, because the technology brings them information uh, very easy to, to access. It's only an idea. Thank you. Thank you. It's super cool. Um, um, Pascual. Uh... Yeah. Um, well, I was thinking in, uh, about this uh, working with uh, people or communities who uh, don't use the digital tools. Of, um, I was thinking of an experience of um, that we faced uh, with um, a community of uh, senior co-housing, and they are people from 55 to 70 uh, years old, and not all of them, not all, all of them uh, are um, used to to use digital tools. So, two things that happened there is that well, we were at the beginning we were very like um, insisted in, in that they, use, they, they should use this kind of digital tools because they, they could uh, be more um, openness and make decisions more open. I mean, everything that we already talk about, it, but uh, they didn't use it. And at the end, what happened is that um, some of them start to use it um, in one moment that they understand that there, there were some people that they were um, trying to capitalize information. So they, at that moment, they then understand that, okay, this tool, this, this kind of space could be useful for that. What I'm trying to say is that um, uh, when we, when we, um, when we um, choose a specific tool or a specific space for communication, and, and, and we, we have to understand how these make more valuable the, the process. I mean, not try to make a necessity, but to make it valuable. And if, if the people who are engaged in the, the process can understand why this could be valuable for them, they're going to use it. And also another thing that happened is that we try to identify uh, allies between the community. So we try to, to the, um, find and look for um, like five, six people who they are engaged with the tools, or at least they they want to learn how to use it, and then uh, those people help the rest of the community, and they work like a link between what is happening in the digital area, uh, um, area and what is happening in the in the physical area. So not all of them are engaged with the digital tools, just some of them, but these people are like um, allies. For us and, and they are helping at the end the rest of, of the community and another another uh, experience that i was uh, thinking regarding, regarding what uh, david was saying to how to communicate uh, to random people um it comes to my mind that this uh, one experience in in Medellas prado experimental distrito and in one of the edition uh, they were uh, using this figure of um, I don't know how to say in English. It's this, uh, this person who is um, yelling the the news uh, from the street to the rest of the people. So they, these people they, they were doing like this, like telling the project to all the the neighborhood, like yelling from through the street to all the people. So it's like okay, we need to to try to get to the ground and and try to think about like very basic very basic ways of, of communicating and, and try to think it in that kind of terms. Thank you, Pascual. Um, we are almost at the end of, the, of our time. So uh, if you remember, we, we had um, a third block, uh, but more or less uh, this block was, uh, is about um, practical, uh, how to apply all these ideas that we have talked about in, in block one and two. So I think this this time of debate we are having uh, is about this. The, there have been a lot of uh, concrete ideas 
um, practical uh, ideas to uh, to apply directly in, directly in, in 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 projects in, in different territories so um i think uh, we can continue with this uh, debate um uh, there were um there was the 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 embassy of berlin that uh, had uh, raised uh, uh, her hand but before uh, uh, you talk i i want to ask you uh, uh to to finish the the session uh, if you have any idea, uh, uh, you ambassadors or you guests, uh, to put in practice uh, in the next weeks uh, to uh, communicate uh, better uh, among the territories or to document better uh, the processes, little experimentations, uh, tests uh, you have now in other projects that you think it could be interesting uh, in this uh, urban rights project uh, to be to be tested. Uh, we can finish with, with this. So we we go with we go with uh, a Berlin Embassy, and then we can we can make a, another tour uh, to finish with with these uh, uh, short uh, ideas. Um, yeah, actually, I had more. Uh... Uh, examples in mind for uh, Christina for analogic uh, communication of that. Uh, we can talk about this. Um, I mean, I don't know if we have a suggestion. The thing, the thing here is that I'm working. Uh, we're working together, Mash and me, uh, and I, and we have a, a very uh, basic dri drive in Google, a folder that we use uh, with different documents uh, regarding. Uh, production needs, uh, communication with the guests, uh, topics um, uh, that we are uh, working on. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it's of any interest for the other territories to have access to this uh, drive, but of course uh, they could if they wanted to. I mean, we don't, there's nothing secret in there. I don't know if this is a thing like that everybody can uh, surf on other people's working document, or uh, I, I don't, we, we didn't even think of contacting actually the other embassies because the topics we are working on are so specific in a way that it's, it makes the communication a bit complicated, I would say, or yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. Or at this, at this point, we wouldn't know what to communicate really. I mean, regarding what was said before, that it's not always the data that's necessary, but the meaning you get out of it. I um, also really enjoy these meetings when everything comes condensed and we, we find out. And I also enjoy very much the um, urban rights newsletter format, which is a bit an advanced email. It has like graphic inputs and it's nice to read. And I think these two are good formats to condense information and to share and exchange. Yeah. Finished. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, uh, um, anyone else? Um, any other ideas to be tested in the, in the next weeks? I think we have a lot of them uh, already. Uh, Alfonso, just maybe some suggestion. I don't know exactly what kind of uh, information the, the network needs no, along the different embassies, but uh, something that works really well is, um, of course, uh, audiovisual communication. So maybe make some short video, not more than three minutes to explain where you are in each project, just to inform the rest of the network, just to let update. In this, in this video, if you want to go further, you can maybe try to, to answer some simple question. Uh, what, we are, what you are doing and what you expect and maybe what um, other 
uh, ask others some simple question maybe uh, to get help for these specific things. And you know, short videos, uh, less than three minutes works really well. Uh, and Dome, just one question. Where do you think uh, we can share these short videos? I think you, for sure, I don't know, you have a, a Telegram or WhatsApp group. I think this is the place. Okay. And met better if directly on the platform. I mean, not a link or, you know, it's not good for the privacy. But it's, 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 <laughs> Thank you. Just right now, there's no uh, common platform for all the territories. I don't know if I understand very well that. R right now, we have uh, the Urban Right uh, website. So it's urbanright.org. Uh, and this is the common, the common platform for all the, for all the territories. Uh, ambassadors and every, everyone can sign up in there and, and publish uh, article, post, uh, events, anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, um, Christina was saying in the, in the chat that we can uh, set up a Telegram group. We already have a Telegram group, so uh, you can join the, the Telegram group. <laughs> and, uh, all the information is in, in, the, in the wiki. Um, but I can send you uh, uh, after, after the session, Christina. Uh, Pablo, you want to talk? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to discuss with uh, Domenico about the three minute video. For me, three minute video is, I understand some people like it, for me it's like a really long time. Um, and I would suggest uh, what thing, uh, is thinking you have to, not only to communicate among yourself, but to tell other people outside what you are doing. And it has worked in some organizations. It's like you have to prepare like what three things you've been doing or just a, a three sentence or, and you compile all these things people are doing and it's kind of your newsletter or whatever that you can set outside. And it's also, it also works internally. Uh, so how to do that? You either have one person collecting them, asking you to do that, or you have a shared document where you have to put these three things you've been doing in your group, in your embassy up to one day in the month and every month you have this list of things that have been done. May, they may be links to things, they might be just a sentence, they might be videos, but it's a way of periodically check what's going on and also to communicate outside because when you have to make the effort to tell someone else, maybe it's, it's a good uh, exercise to understand what you're doing. And another question, um, right now there's uh, like some um, permanent meeting that all the territories has to attend, like uh, every month all the territories are gathering and communicating every week or every two weeks or something like that or There are one one session per uh, embassy, and the other territories can can join the the session. Yeah, but the, there is there is no okay. more uh, uh, common sessions uh, apart these uh, embassy sessions. Would you have the, we make an opening one. But everybody was invited and it was kind of obli obligated to be there. This is the one like in mid term that we advanced it because we have this issue of the communication that we want to, to discuss. And there's also a, a ending one to see the process of each of the embassies that will be next year. And those three are kind of obligated, but uh, uh, except for that, there is no any big uh, obligated uh, meeting for everybody. Now, all the different embassies will have their own 
Parliament and uh, you are invited, but you're not obligated. Okay. And um, no, I mean, I, I was because if, um, for example, uh, right now you have a Telegram group, but uh, well, first of all, not all the people uh, knows about this, um, about this. But anyway, um, if I understand well, the problem is that uh, like a daily basis communication is, is not working because everyone is doing like their things and the context is very specific for each one. But what uh, could work and also um, um, regarding what Pablo was saying and Domenico was saying, I don't know, try to have like a, um, a specific things that every territory has to answer uh, each month, for example, like, uh, okay, uh, what do you learn? What do you, what, what are the challenges that you have? I don't know, like two or three questions that could be answered in video, like uh, Domenico was saying, I think it's a, it's a powerful format because it's very easy to do it. And for us, for example, in civic wise, uh, global cam, it, it works very well. Uh, but something like very easy, but every territory has to answer to the same question. So in each month is like a, a meeting in which one rep uh, uh, representative uh, person of each territory has to attend at least one of them and has to uh, put in common this. And with this, like you can have I you can have like a, a communication space, but at the same time you are like uh, having a, a structured documentation of all the process. So I don't know, the things like that. Okay, so if I understand well, you are proposing a regular meeting, uh, for example, every week or every uh, two week. Um, or uh, or or uh, that every territory or uh, another thing completely different uh, that every each territory uh, record a short video with the same questions, which is both. which is uh, both. Your proposal. both of them. Both. Okay. okay, okay, yeah, but but the thing is like, um. It's about this this idea of, of building a, a common rhythm, mm. like to all the time ha having in mind that okay every month I have to meet with the rest of the embassies and that I have my issues in my local context, but I'm also having in my background that okay there's there's something bigger than this, and I have to meet that something bigger in two weeks, in one week, in three days, so. Uh, having this meeting is like uh, having this in, in the background and this build like a, this common rhythm of, okay, every month is happening this and, and it's happening something that is common. And, and the questions, it was like to have to answer this question and to put in common these questions uh, in that meeting. So it's like to have an structure meeting is not a, just, uh, okay, we, we, we gather around and they, um, not everyone knows how to say what to say or how to uh, put in common this idea. So if everyone has these like two, three questions, two, three subjects to have, has to cover, um, you can have like a structure, a way of communicate the progress that you made in the last two weeks or in the last month so, or whatever. So, yeah. Okay. Um, uh... I think we can stop here because we are uh, losing uh, uh, most of the people. <laughs> we are out of time already. <laughs> so if, if we can continue, but maybe we are <laughs> less and less and less. So I think it, been, it has been very, very cool, uh, very, very interesting. The, um, all the opinions, all the ideas uh, in the next weeks, Maybe we can we can test this uh, this this idea of the short videos that you Pascual and, and Dome name it, and also the 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 regular meeting. We have to see the regularity, um, and we can start uh, using the, the Telegram channel too. Um, 
so uh, thank you all for for your participation uh, i don't know luiso if you want to uh, to close the session no no go ahead president you can do it <laughs> i just want to thank you i was already doing that on the chat so i don't interrupt you thank you everyone and uh, go ahead close it president thank you uh, i <laughs> officially close this session. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, bye. Thank, Thank you. All. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye. bye.